Hello everyone, this is Caleb Marting, and first of all, a little bit of an epilepsy warning. Uh, there's just time lapses, just be careful. Um, right here I'm cleaning up my CNC router that I built a little while ago. Most important part of any project, and it's giving me a chance to, to do this intro, so not too bad. Uh, so what we're doing today, we're going to be carving a pumpkin. Now, we're going to be using the CNC router. I thought this was an interesting preposition, and I wanted to see if my CNC router could basically do 2.5D machining in the sense that, like, could I carve a face or something. Uh, this is sort of inspired by William Osmond's project, but uh, I sort of did it myself too. Now, this was the actually hardest part of the machine machining process was just clamping it because yeah it was uh it was sucky um just had to make sure it didn't move there weren't too many cutting forces on it it cut like butter so it wasn't terrible but it took me a very decent amount of time to just get everything clamped and solidly in there uh something that sort of aided me in this machining process by the way was picking a very flat sided pumpkin it had actually grown on its side and that was really important. Uh, now here I am actually basically setting up the machine, just setting a relative zero and then probing. Um, that probe's not going to be too accurate, but it really doesn't matter as long as it sort of gets below the surface of the skin. Um, you can actually see when I'm done that it was a little bit offset more than I'd like, but uh, it worked out fine in the end and it looks great. Now here I'm making a big mistake and I'll explain that in a second, but I'm attaching my dust shoot thingy and I designed this in such a way originally it's not great but I designed it in such a way that it has a little gap at the bottom so it's even less efficient uh, it just allows me to film through it and I figured it'd be useful and now I'm in the way of the camera anyway here I am starting it up and yeah basically the process I went through was an adaptive clear and then a parallel finishing pass uh, the adaptive clear was done with a 6mm uh, just flat end mill that I got off Amazon. Highly recommend it. Uh, it's very nice. It's worked really well for the walnut scraps that you see actually that I'm using to clamp this down with. Um, and that was at like 5,000mm a minute. But what really killed this part was just the amount of Z retracts and stuff that it had to do. It was just sad. Um, so. Next time I need to sort of optimize against those zero tracks or somehow tell it to not do those, whatever. The other part was the parallel pass that was done with a 3.175 or 1 quarter inch uh, ball end mill. Pretty simple. That was actually faster than this adaptive clear because of all those Z moves. Uh, so here you can see actually why it was such a problem. And I already sort of slowed down to show it, but. I actually had to take my um, sort of vacuum toes off and yeah, just <laughs> the dust shroud did not work. And you don't want to vacuum up these organic materials anyways, they're just so wet that they'll rot and make your entire pumpkin smell garage thingy. Yeah. So here you can see I sped up the video because it's boring, but that's sort of after the roughing pass and that was a good 40 minutes of cutting. I'm not sure how well this is going to show up on video just yet, but there's the face. That is terrifying. Looks like he has a little bit of a cleft lip or something and then nose, but that should get trimmed off. This should also get a little bit trimmed off. There's like half a millimeter. Oh, we'll see. It's not going to be perfect, but for a first attempt, there's the scale. It's not too tall, but from the right angle it looks pretty good. And so after past Caleb was done talking, I went ahead and changed the bit. This was basically just as simple as taking out the 6mm bit and collet and dropping in the three, uh, 1 quarter inch collet. And here I am just taking it back to its original zero and guessing. This does not need to be accurate. Uh, I had 0.5 millimeters of clearance, so it just had to be close enough. Uh, so here you can see, basically it's just moving left and right, and 
now you can also sort of see why the dust shroud is poorly designed and I need to reprint it. You can see it, uh, whenever it goes down it sort of rubs, so whatever. Now, I sped this up a lot just because it's boring. Who cares? Let's finish it. Um, the boring now. I got myself a big boy snack. I don't know if you saw those gushers, but they were very good. Uh, so here, I'm going to go ahead and rotate the camera up just because better view. Uh, and you can see it turned out pretty well. Now, I did have it set to do a 90 degree perpendicular pass, uh, but a little ways through it was not making any difference, so I decided to just stop it, and I don't think it's any worse for wear. The pumpkin was so soft that when I was using a paper towel to clean it off, it just basically acted like an abrasive and took off all those little wisps and lines, uh, which you will see in a second. Now you can see he's got still a little bit of that uh, orange, a little bit on the tip of his nose, and then one of the lines under his lip, and then just a little bit on his eyebrow. But other than that, it turned out really well. And you can see how much twisting I have for that clamping design. I probably need to change those, but whatever. In all, I think this turned out really well, and I'm pretty happy with the results. As you can see, uh, it looks decent when it is lit up. That's somewhat because I actually trimmed off uh, stuff in the back. I could have gone much deeper, uh, so next time I will definitely reduce the amount of downscaling I do. I hope you all enjoyed, see you next time.